In the beginning, there was nothing. Nothing but pinball machines among other entertainments. But then, Atari said, let there be games! And there was. Atari may not be the first to make a video game, but they were the first memorable. Starting off with Pong. A simple yet addictive game that was on a monitor, and you could control the action against another player or even the game itself. It spawned loads, and I mean loads, of home consoles containing Pong. Atari then made a video game console that had switchable cartridges in which you purchased separately. The Atari 2600. At the time, Atari was unstoppable. But then, something bad happened. Somewhere down the line, there were bad games being made like the Pac-Man port and Raiders of the Lost Ark. But the nail in the coffin was E.T. The beginning of the American 1983 video game crash occurred. Soon, no one cared about video games or wanted anything to do with them. This lasted for two years, until a former card and toy company that goes by the name Nintendo, which means leave what to heaven. They made a console that looks like a VCR player and called it the Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES for short. Along with this was a game called Super Mario Bros. Released on the 13th of September 1985 in Japan, Somewhere in 1985 in North America, yeah, the release date there is a mystery, and the 15th of May 1987 in Europe. Get on with it! Why are you doing here, Zap? Stop calling me that. Look, I'm in the middle of a review. It's really important. I'm tired of you taking so long, so just get to the point already. Fine, but I'm still not done yet, so take your seat and eat a... Uh, chicken Kirby. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I was busy walking out the door while you were talking. I said I'm... <sighs> anyway, this game was made by a man called Shigeru Miyamoto, or as he's better known as, Shigeru Miyamoto Bike. That's a stupid name. Who calls him that? Hey, you're back. Of course I am. What? You actually thought I would leave that easily? You underestimate me? You think you're better than me? Well, you aren't. I disagree. For some reason, Nintendo used Mario from Donkey Kong and Mario Bros. as the main character in this game. Mm hmm. Either way, the game was a huge success, selling loads of copies, bringing Mario as the mascot of this company, and saving the video game industry single-handedly. But is it really that good? And does it still hold up today? Well, let's see! The story begins in the Mushroom Kingdom. One day, the kingdom was invaded by King Koopa or Bowser and his army, and uses his magic to turn the people into bricks and plants. The only one who can break the curse is Princess Toadstool, Peach. Unfortunately, Bowser has kidnapped her and taken her to one of his eighth castles. Very conveniently, the Mario Brothers, Mario and Luigi, hears about the story and sets off to his adventure to defeat Bowser. Save Princess Peach and get that cake! Wait, there's no cake? No! So, plot-wise, it's simple. Nothing like Metroid, Zelda, Final Fantasy VII, The Legend of Spiral series, Sonic 06, or Eco the Freaking Dolphin. In fact, you probably wouldn't even know this game had a story if it hadn't been for the manual. In the game itself, there's no dialogue, no cutscene, it's just a title, you push start, play. The way I like it. Mmm, top with some roast potatoes and a spaghetti. That was terrible. As Mario, or Luigi in a two player game, I'll talk about that later, you travel through eight worlds and reach the flagpole at the end of each level. During your adventure, you will have to come across enemies and obstacles that you will have to get around. You can move Mario left and right by using the D-pad, obviously, as well as pressing the A button to jump, which is extremely important. Trust me, you're going to be doing this a lot if you even plan to play the game. And finally, you can run by holding down the B button, and if you jump while running, you can jump higher and further, which not a lot usually tries. Come on guys, does nobody seriously know how to use two buttons with one thumb? You're going to need to learn how to master the controls of video games, because Mario is very vulnerable. All it takes is one hit, and you lose a life. Lose all of your lives and it's game over and you go back to the tile screen. 
But there are question mark blocks everywhere in the game. Jumping underneath them usually reveals a coin where once 100 of them are collected gives you an extra life. But some of them contains power-ups. The mushroom allows Mario to take an extra hit and converts him from a dwarf to a man! And you can duck and break bricks. I'm not gonna bring out that Terry. You know the one. The fire flower allows you to shoot fireballs that can kill anything in this path. Well, except for the buzzy beetle. Or the bullet bills. Or the pato, okay, maybe not anything. The star man or the superstar is simply the star. It grants you temporary invincibility, allowing you to be INVINCIBLE! The one up mushroom, or as my sister and I used to call them when we were younger, seven up mushrooms, gives you an extra life. They are also really hard to come by, so get them while they're shroomy. You don't want to miss out on this great offer. Get your mushrooms free green seven up mushrooms. Drink them out in the can when you can. Dude, are you okay? As I said before, you will need to travel through each level, avoiding obstacles and other hazards to reach the flight bar at the end of the level. That shouldn't be much of a problem, because the game's difficulty is well balanced. For beginners, the first few levels are easy enough to help you out to get used to the controls and the general layout of the levels, and then let's go of your hand in the later worlds. It's like riding a bike, only I still haven't properly learned how to use it. Huh, the irony of this explanation. As for experts, well, thanks to the hidden warp zones that takes you to later worlds in the game, you can speedrun this game and beat it under 5 minutes, and people are still breaking the world record to this day. The most recent was in October 2018. Hmm, what if I... nah, never mind. Some of these levels take place in the overworld, underground, underwater, in the castle. The overworld is a majority of the game. You've got your enemies there. Some of you can jump on, some of you can't. Some pipes you can go down and find a secret room of coins. A rare beanstalk you can find in a brick that will take you to the clouds to get even more coins. The usual Mario stuff. Sometimes you'll be on top of giant mushrooms or trees where you jump on platforms. <laughs> I'm clever. And other times you'll be on top of bridges with cheap cheeps flying all over the place. Holy fish! The underground levels are dark, filled with loads of prana plants, and that's it. The underwater levels are the easiest in the game. Yeah, that's right, I said it. The enemies are impossible to kill unless you use a fire flower. I how does that work? The quote-unquote hard parts are the bloopers. They follow you wherever you go, which, I admit, is pretty annoying. However, if you stay ducking or just move on the ground as small mile, the bloopers will never get you. Even so, I mostly swim over them. They're not that bad. The last level in each world is a castle. The castles are even darker than the underground levels, filled with loads of lava and fire traps. Plus, there's barely if not no power-ups at all in these levels. There are also the ones where if you take the wrong path, the stage loops. At the end of each castle, you fight Bowser. He jumps and shoots fire at you and... that's it. After World 5, he starts throwing hammers at you. The only way to defeat him is to start hurling fireballs at him where you find out you've been fighting that clone this whole time. Or by running underneath him, using the axe to chop the bridge and send him to the pool of lava where he'll be fried and served up as Chicken McNuggets at your local McDonald's. Afterwards, you'll save a toad while being greeted with thank you Mario, but your princess is in another castle. You know what? Screw you, you mushroom head jerk. In the fast castle, you fight the real Bowser. And he does exactly the same as his clone. After beating him, you rescue the princess and get greeted with a new quest. Nothing major happens. All of the easy to kill Goombas turn into buzzy beetles and all of the benefits. <coughs> yeah, excuse me for that one. <coughs> As I was saying. And all of the enemies that move slightly faster. Oh, and you can start from any world on the title screen by pressing the B button. While simple, the game looks great. It's the best looking game of its time. Everything's bright and colorful. The game's memory is so big that the sprites for the clouds and bushes are very identical, and the Goombas nearly didn't make it into the game at all. I don't think I need to make any mention about the music, really. The main theme is the recognizable music in all of gaming, to the point where I find myself humming to it all the time. That's okay. 
the underwater team's pretty nice, and the rest, while short, is still pretty good. Uh, hey Retro, how come the music's faster? You see, in the power regions, which is where I am, the older games run at 50 frames per second rather than the 60 frames per second most people are used to. In other words, the game runs slightly slower. However, for some reason, the music is faster and I don't know why. As far as I'm aware, this is the only game that does that. Really? Huh. It appears that you learn something new every day. Now I know why you're thinking. Retro, you're being so biased! You're saying this is the best game ever made! No. No. Unfortunately, there's no such thing as a perfect game. First of all, the physics. No matter what anyone says, they aren't great. Well, it works nicely, but Mario tends to carry a lot of momentum after running, and it gets worse while jumping. Sure, it's possible to master it, but that doesn't make it any better. And speaking of physics and jumping, the spring can go die in a pool of lava and served up as McDonald's Happy Meal box! The physics are so weird on the sprints, and the timing on these is ridiculous! Next is World 8 Tree. There are these enemies called Hammer Brothers, the worst kind of enemies in the whole game. They constantly throw hammers and jumps around like a crooked mini Bowser. They are hard to avoid and even harder to kill. So, imagine a level filled with Hammer Brothers! Everyone always mentioned this guy in the last castle. Oh no! Show them this! This isn't really something wrong with the game. It is the second last level in the game, but still. God! And last, but better forgotten, the two-player game. This allows two players to take turns in playing the game like most of the arcade games. Player 1 controls Mario, while player 2 controls Luigi. Even though he controls exactly like Mario and is nothing more than a skin swap, I still love Luigi. However, while the whole taking turns concept worked for the arcades, it does not for this game. For those who don't know, you're basically sharing the same controller and waiting for the other player who's currently playing the game to lose a life so you can go on next. This is a big issue. It made sense in the arcade because most arcade levels are short, hard, and they constantly repeat with an added challenge, and it was about who got the highest score. This game is supposed to be an adventure, so competing against each other is nearly pointless. It would have been better for co-op action instead. It is called Super Mario Bros. You might as well get two copies of the game and try to see who can beat it faster. Not to mention that if one of you is really good at the game, the other player will have to wait a really long time for their turn. In our can game say Donkey Kong, it was very unlikely that either of you would last very long without losing a life. So, overall, what do I think of this game? It's pretty great. Despite its flaws, it's a lot of fun. Back in my primary school, people called it a baby's game, and most people I know around here today won't give it a try simply because it's old. Well, you know what? Pull up your socks and try it for at least 10 minutes. There's a reason why I attracted people to Nintendo in 1985, and even today, even if there are games better than this one, you can still have a blast playing this game. Beginners, experts, or just casual gamers. It's available on a lot of Nintendo consoles, but the one I recommend is the Super Mario All-Stars Collection for the Super Nintendo on Wii. It's got updated graphics and sound, a save feature, the physics have been tweaked a bit, most of the glitches have been fixed, oh yeah, there were a few glitches here and there. There's a level where you can't escape. And best of all, it comes with three other games. Four if you count the Super Mario World bundle. Okay, so the review's done. That's it. No more. Go home. The show's over. What are you waiting for? Go! Actually, I'm not finished, Jets. Wait, what? NANI?! Really? I've got to get home. Smash Brothers to play. I need to get my pizza in 15 minutes. Sorry, but you've made it this far. You might as well stay for this too. So anyway, time to look at sequel. Alright! Hi, it's me again, obviously. Thanks for watching this video. I really had fun making this. This wasn't originally gonna be just two parts, it was gonna be one big video, but due to reasons I'll explain another time, I decided to split it into two parts. Special thanks to ShadowCBA for this. You should really go check out his channel, I'm serious.